Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> I have to say, I know very little about contemporary Canadian okay. architecture. Again, one of the reasons why I got uh, this invitation four years ago was because of the group that works on the work of Theodor Krohn. So he's, of course, also not a contemporary architect. He practiced here, I understand, 40, 40, I think he came here 47. First building is 48. I think last building is 1960. So this is a modern, I guess he would be considered a modernist architect. So, uh, and, uh, so I know a little bit of his work because we went to see some of his buildings. But, you know, uh, I know very little. Of course, uh, you know, I was, uh, had, a, uh, was, uh, had an appointment as a, as a the diploma commission of the Academia di Architettura and uh, Yvonne and Shelley, mm. you know, Grafton architects, mm. you know, they built <laughs> the other university yeah. over there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that you should, that's a pretty cool building. <laughs> I understand now that it is quite controversial here in Lima, but uh, that's a good building. Uh, at least, I mean, I don't know the building very in detail, but I, you know, just on last Sunday I walked around it. And, uh, and, uh, so that is a contemporary building that I know. But I think, you know, I mean, you know that too. If you come to Peru, you have, maybe this is a burden for you. You have this history. And, you know, like, of course, when I study architecture history or history in general, in Europe and also in the America, we think they're the Incas, and then you hear something about the Mayans, and that's it. And then you come to Peru and you realize that Incas is just the last one of a long succession of, of architecture. Just this morning I returned from Trujillo, so we went to see Jan Jan, we went to see the Pyramid of the Moon, we went, I climbed the Prieta uh, Pyramid, the old one that is apparently, nobody knows how old it is, they told us between 14,000 BC and 5,500 BC. Uh, so uh, you have this old architecture that is, of course, magnificent. Um, but I, I could not make a definitive statement. But I, you know, I know not enough. I mean, that would be, I would just say something so I can, you know. But I, I'm sure you have, you have good architecture. Yeah, that we don't we simply don't know the answer for this. You know, I mean, the writing of history, as we know, the names that we use, sometimes they change, and sometimes in the beginning there was a different name, and then somebody writes an, an important essay or a book, and, and the name sticks. I think many of the historical periods that we have or epochs, you know, I mean, not modernism historicism, baroque, and so on, they were actually not called that, you know, a while back. You know, these are the names we use today. And so, uh, if you ask me about non-referential architecture, of course, that would be, I mean, I would like that if, if, if in 500 years, you know, architecture students would open the architecture book and they would say, hey, uh, non-referential architecture, uh, who came up with this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. you know I mean, that would be nice, you know, I mean, for my own personal, I mean, I will be dead by then, so I don't know what benefit I have, but, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, it, it's actually, it's a good, you know, in a way, I tell you, Valerio and I, we actually didn't like non-referential so well, so re really well, because the non, you know, it, we had, but we, it's, 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 it's kind of negative, to have non-referential, you know, but we, we 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 thought about we were aware we are aware of this and we were thinking about this for a long time, and for a little while for the German, uh, you know, we had a name, Gegenstandslos would, would be the word, which would be there would be not a non, but then that didn't translate into English. It was it was much more too local, that didn't really work, and then was also different connotations, you know. Historically, art historically, uh, yeah. So in the end, we had it as non-referential. Uh, but uh, we we don't know. I mean, at this point, we don't know how you know in 100, 200, 300 years, 
what names we will use for uh, the different epochs. You know, like the word modern, you know, is this going to be a, a term that we really just use for a distinct period, let's say 1890 to 1960? Yeah? Or are we using the term modern like, you know, like more general sense that modern is something that is of today? And people say, look, I'm modern. If you say, I'm modern, then you mean you're, you're of today, you know, you do things that a person would do today. So maybe even the modern epoch that now we, we call modernism, maybe this will stick and maybe it will change. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it will, you know, it, it probably is different. Now it, it is like this, so maybe in 500 years it will be different. As long as people understand it, it will be fine. You know? I think names change quite often. I mean, quite often, not often, but they do change. No, not at all. No, 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 not at all. Um, maybe you're reacting to what I say, that architecture should be studied formally. Uh, maybe that is a response to that. And it will be misunderstanding and it is, again if you, in the book it says it doesn't mean that architecture students should not enroll in the history of architecture that that's not the point they should and there's a great deal to be learned from that but there is a distinction between what is useful knowledge for somebody who wants to design a building and it's a good question what do you need to know as, an, as a designing architect when you want to design a building uh, make a drawing by hand or computer, and what kind of information, what kind of knowledge do you need to have? And, uh, and, and of course you might want to learn from old buildings, and that's why I had the temp temple in Mitla, you know, that's what it is, uh, there, just, you know, just uh, uh, not with who built it, when was it built, how was it used, what was the budget, and so on. That was, you know, th this is not so important information. But how these spaces, these, for example, how these two main spaces are relating to each other, that one space is directional in this direction, has these columns, then the other one has four openings, but you don't, you know, that you don't enter at the, at the, at the, at the center. Yeah? Those things are important. Yeah? Uh, no, uh, actually architects, you should study architect history of old buildings in detail. As a matter of fact, for an architect, for a young, for a student, or maybe not for a student, I would, I think you can learn more from old buildings than from uh, almost contemporary buildings. I understand my own students, they're most interested in the buildings of today. And it's a very tough uh, sale for a professor to convince students that actually they should study older buildings. But I think older buildings, there is a, there is a little bit of distance, you know, and you can, you, I think in a, in, a, in a very contemporary building you almost have too much information that, that again, that is not so important. And you know, if you, if you for example, what I just saw, you know, like in, in, uh, uh, this, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, around Trujillo, very little information. And actually, I'm not actually, I don't take tours, although they forced me into tours, otherwise I could not see it, but I kind of stayed away. Because I want to look on my own. It's not I, you know, I can go home and read, you know, exactly when it was built and which, which ruler and so on and so on. But I want to. I'm looking for what's important for architecture. You know, what is spatial, what is formal. I look at the ornaments and, and, and so on. I look at the colors. I look at the materials. Uh, so old buildings are of great, great importance. The book in no way suggests you should not look at old buildings. It's more skeptical that you look at old buildings through sociology. And history, by its definition, has, to some degree, has that purpose. You know? And there you have to make a very detailed, or a very exact delineation, what knowledge is good for the architect and what is not. It's probably not black and white. It's, it's, it's okay for an architect to know something about the Renaissance. You know, or the Baroque, and that the church, you know, the Counter-Reformation and things like that. There is nothing that doesn't hurt you that you know that. But to know about the Counter-Reformation doesn't make you a good architect. <coughs>
Does that make sense? A message? Oh, well, yeah. No, I'm not a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> a suggestion, no. I don't know, something. I mean, you... For our uh, career. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you need to love architecture. This is very important. I think if you not really love architecture, you will not be good architects. Uh, actually, again, my co-author, Valerio, I just with Sidi asked this question. He once told students, I love I'm the better architect because I love architecture more than you do, he told the person you know, who is also an architect. I love it more than you do, you know. And he told the person, of course, you know, what to tell me, you know. But you know, and, and we don't know, you know, whether whether he loved it more or less. But but I think there is something to be learned from this. You know, I think you have to really love architecture. I think this is true for every profession. If you want to be a good lawyer, you better love to be a good lawyer and love the law. Uh, but I mean, you know, so this is a very open-ended kind of answer, maybe to your question. But, but I think it's so, it's important to know that, you know, and to be sure, you know, that that you want that you love architecture. And I think you can you can feel, you know, nobody else can tell you that, but I think you can kind of feel that, you know, how much it means to you. If it's just an occupation that you know you go to the office nine to five and. It's a bread job. I don't think so. It's going to you will become a good architect. Uh, so I think you, you know, my message. I don't have a, a message. You should do this or that or this. You know, I mean, I think each of you has to find his or her own way. But I do think you have you have to you have to be really into it. You, know, you have to love architecture, and that it means so much to you that that you would. You know, you would do ridiculous things that other people would be like, are you, are you sure you want to do it? So in Japan, for example, if I was staying in Kyoto. <coughs> I decided that Kyoto would be a good way to go to see Ise, the, the Shinto shrine, and, and so on. And I also, you know, I wanted to see the Taishima Art Museum by Nishijawa, which you should see. It's a very nice building. But it took me eight and a half hours to get there one way. No, not one way. See, Together, it took me eight and a half hours. So in the morning, a little bit more than four hours, and then, and then back a little bit more than four hours, just to see one building. I took the bus, the train, the ship, and then I walked. And, on, and then, and then the, the bus again. You know, you could say. And when I told, I told uh, somebody that I did that, and they looked at me puzzled. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know, why would you do this? And I said, I just wanted to see that building because it's an important building. It's a beautiful space and I needed to see it, you know. And, uh, so it, I spent eight or nine hours both ways and I was there maybe two and a half hours or so, whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, you understand, it's like, it's an effort, you know. But it didn't bother me the slightest. I mean, I was not in the, in the train and, the, you know, no. I have to go to this Teshima Island, and it's really a long time, you know, and so on. Actually, I was excited. First, I was excited the anticipation that I will see it. And then on the way back, I was excited that I had seen it. You know, like, wow, this was... A... And then I'm looking at my own photographs. Like, this is good. You know, this is good. I was very happy that I went. Uh, so in no way would I ever think I wasted nine hours of, of sitting in the train and you know, and the boat, although it was a nice boat ride and so on. Yeah, it's just one example, but I think uh, you, have to, you have to love architecture.